pastor here at First Presbyterian in Galesburg, and I am joined by the wonderful Mike and Sandra Shoemaker, who will be leading us in our music today. I'm glad that you're joining us, even in this time of social distancing. And we will keep you informed about when the church will be open again. But for now, we want you to stay home as much as possible. Call friends and loved ones, write notes to each other. And know that we are all praying for you and thinking of you during this time. Please join me in the call to worship. Awaken from your slumber and bring your fears and anxieties into the presence of the Lord our God. Hear the call of our shepherd and allow his voice to lead from selfish ambition to the feast of grace. May the light of Christ shine into the hidden darkness of our lives and restore us for the service of the Lord. Come. Let us worship God. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed. Friends, let us pray. Lord, help us to relax. Take from us the tension that makes peace impossible. Take from us the fears that do not allow us to venture. Take from us the worries that blind our sight. Take from us the distress that hides your joy. Help us to know that we are with you, that we are in your care, that we are in your love, that you and we are one. Amen. Friends, since you are not here in the sanctuary with me today, I have this candle. And I'm lighting this candle in honor of all of you so that I know that our spirits are connected that the flame of God wraps around us in its warmth and guides us in its light. 
And I invite you to digitally meet and greet. Like us right now, write a quick comment of hello, hi, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. I hope you are too. And may the peace of the Lord be with you. So I encourage you, go ahead, write in the comments if you're watching us live so that we know that you're here and we can all be connected together. And as you continue to do that, I offer our scripture reading today, which comes from John chapter 9, verses 1 through 12. Hear now God's word. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When Jesus had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes saying to him, go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then Jesus sent the man away, and he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it's someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how are your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? And he said, I do not know. This is God's word for us today. Please pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We are currently in a media overload. Information is changing constantly and the news never seems to take a breath. The 24-hour news cycle is so real. Even as I am here giving this message to you, I have my notes on my phone. And my phone keeps popping up with news alerts that I keep having to shoo away so I can read my sermon notes. The news never stops. And in this time of a worldwide pandemic, It feels like one day has about 300 years worth of new information that we're expected to absorb and shift through. And in this time when we have so much information coming in, it is hard to know what is true and what is false. Misinformation is widespread. For example, the idea that this disease came from someone eating a bat, it's patently false, but it's still being spread as if it is truth. And this misinformation has started leading leading to racism and prejudice against those of Asian descent. And the man in today's gospel also faced prejudice. He also faced years and centuries worth of misinformation. See, this man was born blind, and in the ancient world's code of ethics, he must have deserved it somehow. Because evil means bad things are supposed to happen to you, and being good means good things are supposed to happen to you. 
So if someone is born blind, then surely he or his parents or his grandparents or somebody in his past sinned against God and did something so evil that this man was born blind. And that prejudice has followed this man through his entire life as he has grown up. Even this miraculous story doesn't begin with a miracle or with this man even seeking help from Jesus. Instead, this story begins with the disciples pointing out this blind man and asking, Rabbi, teacher, who sinned? Why is he blind? Whose fault is it? And Jesus stops. And the first thing that he does is not heal the man of his blindness. The first thing that he does is heal his disciples from their ignorance and from their prejudice. People aren't blind because of something they or their ancestors did. They do not get punished because of sins against God. That's not how God works. God is about mercy and forgiveness, not about righteous indignation upon innocent babies. In the same way, people don't spread disease more because of where they or their parents or their grandparents are from. It has nothing to do with that. This man is blind, not because of anything he did or his parents did or his grandparents did. But this man is blind and Jesus uses this man in order to teach an important lesson to us all. In order to teach a new way of being in community. In order to teach that God's love is for everyone. And that when we look at someone and we begin to judge and when we begin to ask, well, who sinned that this has happened? We're missing the whole point. We're not seeing with God's eyes anymore. We have closed off our hearts, covered our hearts, blinded our hearts to God's love, to God's compassion, to God's mercy. And Jesus says to his disciples, this man is here so that I can heal you too. Heal you of your ignorance and your prejudice and help you to see with God's eyes. And so then Jesus heals the man. He makes this mud paste and puts it on his eyes and sends this man to the pool to wash. And it's a testament to how well this man has managed to get through life that he is able to get to the pool of Siloam without any assistance. He doesn't need someone to guide him. He knows his way. He knows how to get where he is going. He knows how to do what needs to be done. He knows how to live a full and complete life. So maybe blindness wasn't such a curse after all, but maybe this man simply adapted to a new way of being. And Jesus heals this man and he goes to the pool and he washes and this man can see for the first time in his life and he can see how everyone's hearts are closed off and how everyone's hearts are still covered. Because instead of finding a community that's willing to celebrate with him and rejoice with him and say, you who are blind now see, praise God. Instead, he finds a community hounding him. Who are you? Are you really that blind man? Are you really that guy who used to sit and beg? Is that really who you are? I don't think it's you. I think it's someone who just looks exactly like you, but can see. How is it that you see? Why can you see now? And they even take this man, later in the story, if you keep on reading, they take this man and they drag him to his parents and say, is this really your son? Because he can see now and we didn't think he could. And we're very confused about it and we don't like it. 
And there are questions about, should Jesus have even healed this man because it was the Sabbath? Can we get our vision on the Sabbath? And everyone is missing the main point. Because here is a great moment to celebrate. Here is a moment for a miracle. Here is a moment where people should be able to drop their prejudice, drop what they have known and celebrate something new and different. And they cannot. They cannot handle that this man has now received his sight. They cannot handle that Jesus has performed a miracle. They cannot handle that God is doing something new. The man who is blind can now see, but those who were always, those who have always been able to see are blinded by their own prejudice and sense of how the world should work. Because if this man can now see, it means that his blindness wasn't the cause of God being angry. If this man can now see, it means that sometimes bad things happen to good people. And sometimes even the reverse is true. Good things happen to bad people. And sometimes we can't predict what's going to happen. And maybe the way God's world works is that things sometimes get messy and God says, go and wash. So friends, what are the places in our lives that we need the mud wiped away? What are the places in our lives that we need to be cleansed, to have our hearts cleaned, so that we can see through God's eyes. We continue to see with God's eyes when we lay aside our own prejudice and view the world through the lens of love and mercy and compassion. We continue to see with God's eyes when we share out of our abundance instead of hoarding out of our fear. We continue to see with God's eyes when we hold on to hope of new life fresh beginnings, and the possibility that comes with each new dawn. We continue to see with God's eyes when we recognize that God is in control. God will give us strength through all challenges and tribulations and that God journeys beside us through every dark valley and into every green pasture. And we continue to see with God's eyes when we let go of the misinformation the world tosses to us and seek first God's truth, that we are the beloved and we are called to love. That's the truth that Jesus is getting at. The man who is blind is beloved. Everyone that we see is beloved. And when we wash our own hearts and cleanse our own spirits, that we might see with God's eyes, what we see are God's children. What we see is God's plan. What we see is that God has hope that we might come together as one people not divided, but united by our love, by our common humanity, by the God who created each and every one of us. So friends, I invite you, cleanse the mud from your hearts, wash your hands for 20 seconds, and see with fresh eyes, with God's eyes, Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, during this time of social distancing and lockdowns due to the COVID-19 pandemic, remind us that we are still connected to one another We pray for those impacted by travel bans, those unable to connect with loved ones, 
those who have insurance and those who do not, those who are getting treatment and all of those who cannot get a hospital bed. We pray for all of us who are anxious and afraid. Remind us that we are infinitely connected to you and we can come to you in prayer at any time, in any setting. Help us to be the body of Christ that you call us to be in this moment. May we be your hands and feet right now in neighborhoods, farms, and small towns, hospitals and clinics, tribes and large cities, as we work to safely feed each other, heal each other, look out for each other, and act as your instruments in this ailing world. Be with the very young, the school-aged children as they watch this world around them. Be with all of those who are in the vulnerable population, that their fears and anxieties might be calmed by your holy presence. Guide the healers on each continent, in each country, in each city around the globe, and be with them and with each of us as we struggle to navigate new things in new ways. Sustain the researchers, virologists, laboratories, and medical transport teams. Lord, all economies around the world have been terribly affected over these past months. We pray for each of the ways it is impacting the small business owners, investors, our elderly, our homeless, the middle class, all of us in vastly varied ways. May we rebuild together without rank of who is worthiest, but instead guided by your light and filled with your love, stronger than we can imagine. May we hear your songs of hope ringing from the balconies of Italy and Spain. May we hear your songs of peace and the caremongers of Canada who out of kindness, not fear, have created online groups searching out need and providing help. May we know that these are the songs of all of us, your beloved children, songs that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Shield. 
May the dirt and the dust and the mud of this world be washed away so that you might see a new vision, God's vision of justice and righteousness, Christ's vision of care and compassion, the Spirit's vision of hope and restoration. And may the holy in three guide each of our steps in this new vision as we live into our call in a changed and changing world. And may the peace of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with each one of you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>